Hey, it's Rob at Man Sewing, and today we're gonna build this killer kid's teepee. Or, if you ever get thrown out of the house because you get caught as a man sewer, you'll have a nice little shelter to set up in the backyard. Okay, so here's the lowdown on the uh, supplies you're gonna need to make your fort or your teepee, right? So hopefully you've purchased these before you've gotten thrown out of the house. The first thing we're gonna need actually is our standard wooden closet dowels. These are like, I think an inch and a quarter, get them at the hardware store. I've used brooms, I've used lumber and sticks from the yard, anything works great. Then I'm gonna cover those with this wood looking fabric. I found this from Wyndham. Uh, the skins are also from Wyndham. And it just reminds me obviously of trees, so it's gonna be perfect for that. Now this we want a yard and a half. We need 54 inches because we're gonna be making at least 50 inch long tubes out of this. And this is gonna cover those wooden dowels behind me. And then we're also going to get four and a half yards at least of what's going to be our outer wall panels. And remember, this is a teepee that's kind of built for a smaller person. I've seen a lot of these teepees done with multiple layers pieced together. And so, of course, you would want to do your math before you head off to the, the yardage shop that way. Okay. Due to the magic of the television, you see I'm already pre-prepared, so I need to remind you to make sure we're working from your raw goods right now. So you've got that yard and a half, 54 inches, and this cut here is gonna be the 54 inches. So be careful, your selvage to selvage is only 45 on your printing, or your printed cottons, okay? So I just wanna point that out. So I've already prepared this down, and I made myself four strips that were six and a half inches wide by the 54, and then I'm gonna trim these down as I go so they end up at about 50 inches. I'm hoping that makes sense for you there, okay? I wanna get the selvage off this other side as well, so I'm just going to rotate this, and now what I love to do is I'm actually lined up in my ruler at six and a half inches, but I also like to start a little bit below, so I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm gonna to start to cut, and before I go any further, I'm just gonna slide my ruler up without moving the blade, and then I'm just gonna finish that off. So you can actually use a smaller ruler to make a big cut nice and efficient that way, okay? Now once those pieces are trimmed down, the next step I'm gonna personally do is I'm gonna fold this short edge under and basically just kind of give it a finger press. You could certainly hit it with the iron if you wanted, and I'm gonna run a line of stitching across that to finish the edge, okay? So, why don't you join me over here at the sewing machine while I prepare the short ends, and then I've got a cool trick to show you. Okay, now, here comes the magic. How many of you hate turning tubes? I do, so want me to show you what I've learned how to do? This is really cool. So first, Sorry, this wasn't in the supply list. This is something you should always have ready. One big fat safety pin and a ball of twine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, and notice I'm not gonna cut this off the twine. I'm gonna feed that through. Oh, I made a mess. Nothing a rotary cutter won't save. Let's slow down, there. I'm gonna feed that through like that. Tie myself off a nice double eight knot so that I could rock climb with that if I wanted to and a twist. You can tie whatever knot you want, but in doing so, you wanna make sure your knot's not gonna slip out, because this is the magic, okay? So that's all locked in there nice and tight. I've used a good solid piece of cord. Now I'm gonna take this big safety pin and I'm gonna pinch it right about here in the middle of my tube 2B, and I'm gonna put it on the right side. And I'm gonna kinda of weave it through that fabric a little bit, because this is gonna take a bit of torque at the end. Now, what happens is I pull off several yards of this, throw that on the floor where it goes, and then this twine is going to be stitched inside of the tube, just like that. As I approach the sewing machine, I've got my fingers here on my left hand, kind of feeling where that, tube, that, that cording is or that thread is in there, because I don't want to stitch it into my seam allowance. So I repause, and sometimes I need to use my thumb to get that in there. And as cumbersome as that may seem, it's going to save us a ton of time at the end. So now I'm just going to race on down this whole seam allowance. All right, 
So we're coming to the end, and hopefully due to the magic of camera here, you didn't have to sit through all of that. You just got a brief moment of it. But as I finish this off, I'm gonna pull this out. And then what I do, this is really cool. I'm gonna start scooting my fabric up the line loosely, just kind of getting a grip, ha ha. And then I take that big safety pin and I make sure it's making its way into the tube. Then, the first couple inches, I kind of use my fingers to pinch where the tube isn't, and then voila, out comes my tube. Like how fast and easy is that? I think that'd be a good slow motion segment. And then, voila. So once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead Remove the safety pin, and I'm gonna make four of these. And then the next thing I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna press those seams nice and flat. Okay, so I've got all four of my tubes already cut, stitched, pressed, turned right sides out, all that nonsense is behind us. So all four of these are gonna set aside. But one of the things I found out, there's a bunch of different ways to construct these teepees and the, the different math. I followed some basic instructions I had seen and the numbers didn't quite jive. So this actually became my tape measure. So I'm going to keep this handy, but let me show you what I'm talking about a little bit more. Remember, we're going to be dealing with our four and a half yard chunk of our skin or our wall panel fabric or whatever it is that you're, you're using for those walls. And do be aware, the way I'm going to cut this, I'm technically using the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom. So this is not a great um, layout if you've got a directional print, right? If you've got a bunch of cute little characters all over your fabric that are facing right side up, you want a, a, a unidirect or multi-directional print for this. So real quick, here's your quick sketch. This is our fabric from here to there is 45. Okay. And then what I ended up finding is a lot of um, the math at the base or the bottom of the wall is about 40 inches. Mine turned out to be 46. And at the top, it's about uh, four inches. So from here to here, we're going to say is roughly four. And from here to here is about 46. Now, when I start, first started making those, I took my Sharpie out and I drew a line and I drew a line. The best recommendation I can make in the entire video here is to mark all of this first. You don't want to have any bad cuts during this section, okay? Next mark here, that would have been a four. This one down here is going to be a 46. Just like that. And then this will be cut. Okay, and so on and so forth until we have four of those. Now, if you're really managing your fabric well, one of these sides over here, and when this gets cut off, one of these sides over here, those two partial panels could be used for your front door. I wasn't thinking that far ahead, so I made four of these big trapezoids and then I cut one in half, I'll be showing that in a few minutes, to put in um, the door, but you technically could use your fall off to make your doors as well, especially if this is not a directional print. So now that I've shown you the quick sketch, let me go ahead and show it how it really works on fabric. So with that, I'm going to keep this real handy and I'm going to lay this out and you're going to be able to see I've already made one of my cuts. So my angle right now is already really working well for me. But if I wasn't sure, this is what I did. I came over my four inches and I made a mark. Okay. At the bottom, I'm going to need to mark over, what are we doing, 46 inches. So from there to there, I come all the way out here and I make a 46 inch mark. Now, after doing several of these, I learned I could technically fold this at the center point and I could use this line to create this line over here. But until you figure that out, I'm going to show you the hard way. What I also found having those tubes done first was critical because I was able to use my tube and lay it in here and I brought it all the way up here to see that that point and that point are actually going to match up. So the first time I was making my markings, my tubes were running very long at the end like that. And so it meant that I was going to have to finish my tubes differently. So you want to at least mark and measure one so that your tubes line up with your marks on your fabric. Now what I would do is take as many long rulers as possible 
and start preparing myself a line heading from that 46 inch mark all the way back up here to this four inch mark. And that also gets kind of tough. So here's the easy way out. Like I said, we already knew the first cut. From here over, two inches is my center point. If I'm being rotten, but I'm not gonna use these selvages anyways, I'm gonna mark it on the front side too. And then I'm gonna take this bad boy here and I'm gonna fold it over that way and this way. And I'm just gonna simply make sure that both selvages are lining up. Both selvages line up that way. Everything's gonna be nice and square. And the other cool thing about that is that keeps all of my angles on all my walls the same. Okay, that's just a little fun geometry for all of you. You can see why I recommended having a nice large working space. For myself, I am relatively confident that I would now just go ahead and lay my ruler on there, get my rotary cutter out. It's somewhere, like in everyone's sewing room, it's buried under fabric somewhere. There it is, under fabric, like I said. And now we're just gonna take and we're gonna continue to cut that, slide our ruler down and cut that. Do not forget to move your mat while you're cutting or if you're really gentle, you can slide your fabric, slide your fabric and keep your cut going, right? We're just gonna keep cutting and cutting all the way through. Okay, now that I have my tubes, I have all four of these made, they've been cut stitched, turned right sides out, pressed nice and pretty. So these are gonna get set aside for just a few more moments. Before we can really start the complete assembly of our fort, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the edges. You can see right here where I've already finished this edge. I left the short side. That way your boss doesn't catch you watching videos here at work. I'm just gonna turn that under and then I'm gonna do it again, kind of like I did with those tubes. And I'm finishing these edges now because we're not gonna be able to get to them once those poles are in place. So let's just run a quick stitch through that. Like I said, you're doing the, the top and the bottom of three of your big trapezoid panels like this, right? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prep our door panels as well. So I took one of those trapezoids and I split it in half. Here's one of the sides. Finished at the bottom finished at the top, but I've also finished now along the straight edge. Did that to both sides. Eventually, my very last step of the entire teepee before we slide the poles in, is to gonna sew down the other side of this 16 inches to secure the top, but leave the bottom open so we can go in and out of our door. So I've got this one ready, and I've got this long side ready here, and I'm gonna start to set in our rod sleeve. Keeping in mind, the rod sleeve is going to have to be on the exterior of the teepee, so I'm gonna take my first piece and I'm gonna lay it print sides up. And then I'm gonna take my rod sleeve and I'm gonna lay it, and right in here is where my seam allowance is. Okay, so that's where I already stitched that together earlier. And I'm gonna set that in there and I'm gonna set that in there like that. Make sure it's nice and even on both sides. And then I'm gonna take my door panel as it is, and I'm gonna lay it on just the same. And because we're dealing with a long amount of sewing, and this is on the bias technically, I'm gonna use these great little clips here. It's kind of in lieu of pins. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp these together. I've got about a half dozen pins, so I'm gonna clamp these together about every eight or 10 inches just to make sure things stay nice and tidy. Okay, the bottom's all lined up nice. I'm gonna clamp it come up a little ways, clamp it, I think you get the point. If I have extra clamps when I'm done, I will come back in and set them in, kind of evenly space them out. I guess safety pins could work, straight pins. This would be a fantastic use for your duct tape. Maybe you could staple it or nail gun it or something fun like we do here at Man Sewing. Okay, let's get this finished off so we can build our fort. done. Okay, so now I'm going to take my edges and I'm going to approach my sewing machine here. And I've got just a little bit of this extra tail kind of hanging off down here at the bottom. You'll see why, I hope, in a moment. 
Okay, and I'm going to begin stitching in, and then once I've got this locked down, I'm going needle down, and now I can pull that first clip. And we're just going to roll that through there. Now this is kind of a fun project. While I was working on this in my studio, my kids decided they had to get involved. So they started preparing all of the things they were going to put in their fort. Now I've got a nine-year-old daughter and an 11-year-old son, and they were super excited about this. But the best part was, I think my son had gone off to play with some of his buddies when I finally finished it, and my daughter got to climb in, and she did all of her reading homework that night in her little fort by flashlight. So not only is this an awesome, awesome sewing project, but it's actually the kids love these things. It turned out perfect. I love that. Okay, and so once that's done there, oops, I'm going to bring it back over, open it up to check to make sure I have my tree on the outside of my teepee or my skins there, right? And then what that's done is it's also given me just a little bit of length at the bottom end. So the top corner was what I was most concerned about lining up nicely. The bottom corner, I remember I went a little bit long, so that'll kind of fit into the ground. It'll look like the trees coming out of the earth for you and whatnot. So once that is all done, we're going to go ahead and assemble the rest of the walls, put this back together. All right, so I just finished putting in the last, the fourth pull. So I've got all my seams for the walls and the doors, and I just need to show you how I finished that door off itself. Okay, so earlier we mentioned that we have our seam allowances, so this is the actual door here, and then I've also stitched 16 inches worth knotted up here and knotted down at the bottom, so that's what's going to keep that door panel sliding open. Okay, there was a couple of other finishing ideas I had that were kind of an afterthought. I decided to use some of the scraps of my skin fabric to make door ties and the lashing for around the poles. And when those are all done, this is where they ended up. And it was an afterthought for me. And the benefit of an afterthought is we have seam rippers. Those are afterthoughts for sewing. So all I ended up doing was taking about a two inch section of thread back out of this gap. But it took me a little while to figure this out. So I had the whole thing assembled, couldn't quite get it right. I needed one tab. So this is the front of the door and it is between the first pull so I have one side of that tab hanging out here so that when I roll this door back, right, think about your real tents, here comes the other tie. So I can do that just like yay. Okay, that'll keep that open. So one is on the inside. I think I just heard my wife banging around on the door outside. I better be quiet about this. One is on the inside and one is on the outside. See that? Okay, so once that's all done, grab it from the middle. Give it a good shake out, and I have all four of those secured. Now, probably easiest for you all to see, if I take it like this, and start to basically just feather in that rod. And I'll see if I can knock the whole set over behind me. Now, once I have that secured like that, I'm just going to slowly feed that in there. You could take a little bit of time to sand these out. I've seen some folks actually drill holes through these, but I use these rods for everything. So anyways, I'm going to put all four of those in and then start to stand it up. And the fort will be all but ready to rock and roll. Okay, so now I've got all four of these rods slid through. And this is going to be one of those places you wish you were an octopi, right? Meaning that you had a bunch of arms. And here's that long tab. So one of the tricks, just kind of drop that around your neck. And you grab all four of your poles like this. And before you start worrying too much about setting them out, right, just kind of let them lock in. And then I take my lashing and I get one loop around first. And then I just kind of start working it between each pole so that I can control the poles as I go. And once it's all secured, like yay, then I can start to set it all up and spread it all out. So Bob? that's the... Bob, are you sewing again? 
Hey, it's Rob, back from man sewing, and whew, that was a close one. My wife wasn't too heated about me sewing again. I don't think she really knew how much time I spent in the studio today. And I just love making these forts, and as a matter of fact, I love camping and being outdoors, and I bet a lot of you do too. So why don't you do me a favor? In the comment section, let me know one of your favorite camp stories, or send me a cool picture of the fort you've made, or your fun camping setup, and the way that you like to spend your time outside with your kids. With all that said, this is Man Sewing. We'll see you next time.